Hi everybody, welcome back to Dee's Book Brain. I'm Dee and this is my book brain. Today we are going to do my June wrap up. So we're going to go over all the books I read in the month of June. Now I have a total of seven books that I read, which I'm pretty proud of. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first book I read in the month of June was No Exit by Taylor Adams. Now this is a mystery thriller. It's about this girl, Darby Thorne, who is going home to visit her dying mother. Unfortunately, along the way, she gets snowed in at a Colorado rest stop. And everything's fine. There's four strangers there. She's anticipating that they'll have to stay there for a few hours, maybe the night. She's not happy, but it's not the end of the world. Until she goes outside to try to get some cell reception to make a call. And she finds a little girl locked in an animal cage in the back of one of the people's cars. So the rest of the story is her figuring out this mystery. Who does the car belong to? Why have they kidnapped this girl? And how far are they willing to go to keep their situation a secret? This book was good. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. The characters were good. The setting was great. It really made you feel the isolation that Darby was feeling. You genuinely felt the fear that she had of having nowhere to run and it being in this closed off, frozen in rest stop with complete strangers, knowing that she has to save this little girl's life and not knowing how. The villains were phenomenal. Once you figured out who they were and they started revealing their true selves, they were insanely crazy. I mean, to the point of being slightly disturbing. Um, so character wise, this was a really good book. Plot wise, it was great. Great is a strong word. It was really good. It had a lot of twists, most of which I I won't say I didn't see them coming because if you read enough mystery thrillers, you kind of get a feel of how these novels are going to turn out. But you can at least appreciate the twists and turns that come along in these books. You can see how it was artfully crafted or, you know, I understand how I wasn't supposed to see this coming. And for the most part, all the twists were like that. But then the very last like big plot twist that we saw was a little ridiculous. Um, to me, it, it was a little unnecessary. Without giving too much away, I can say that it just didn't have to be as wide of a scope as it was. I don't know. If you've read the book, you may know what I'm talking about. Um, overall, though, I would recommend No Exit by Taylor Adams. It's a very quick read. Um, it's definitely a page turner. You don't want to put it down until you figure out what's going on. And um, highly recommended. All right, moving on. The next novel I read was 14 by Peter Kleins. Now, this is about a young man named Nate who moves into this too good to be true apartment complex. It's reasonably priced. Everything's included. It's, you know, good location. It's, it's in a perfect place. But after he moves in, he starts to notice that things are a little off. He's got radioactive cockroaches, padlock doors that no one knows what's behind and lights that kind of don't do what lights are supposed to do. And so he realized that there are some things going on in this apartment complex that he wants to figure out. Fortunately, most of his fellow residents are also just as curious. And so they kind of band together to figure out what's going on in this apartment complex. I loved this book. I loved this book. I had recently read The Fold by Peter Kleins, and I loved that book. And so if you've read that one and liked it, you will absolutely love this one. It was such, it, it was so much book packed into a regular sized book. I don't know how else to say it, but it's just like, there just was so much going on 
to these residents trying to unravel this mystery and like the depths they went to literally to figure out what was going on. And I won't say this was a horror novel per se, but it definitely gave me the creeps. Like there were certain aspects of it that I just, I really enjoyed. I was kind of surprised because usually in these, horror type novels where things are just kooky and crazy. The characters are not really a major part of the story. I mean, they're important because they kind of move things along. But as far as general plot goes, the characters could be interchangeable with most. But with this one, I got so attached to these characters because you, again, there's so much packed into this you know regular size book that by the time you get to the end you feel like you're living in this apartment with these people and it's just it was just so good I mean I, I if you love science fiction slash horror slash what the hell is going on you gotta read 14 by Peter Clines you will not be disappointed from page one to page in the book it's phenomenal highly highly recommend it Go read it right now. Okay, go read it. Oh, and I gave that one five stars. The next book I read was Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. This is a young adult fantasy, I guess, is the best way to describe it. It's about this young thief, and um, she stumbles upon some information a conspiracy to kill the queens of her land. And in this, um, world and this is a very brief show but there's four quadrants in this kingdom and each is ruled by a different queen and our lead lady leading lady stumbles upon a plot to kill all four queens and so it's kind of a race against time with her and her friend messenger friend who is obviously a love interest I don't really know how to describe him he was kind of a a flat character to be honest and I think I really think this book would have been a little strengthened if it didn't have a love interest but what do I know I'm just a reader I'm not a writer um overall I gave this book three and a half stars there was nothing really wrong with it um it was very unique I'll say that I have not seen a kingdom royalty system built like this only women can rule there are always four queens and the quadrants are kept separate so each quadrant provides a valuable resource to the other three and it was really good the twist at the end i saw coming from very early on in the book um it wasn't quite what i expected but it was in the is in the field of what i anticipated happening doesn't make it any worse it's still a good book. Um, again, it's not great. It's not the best young adult fantasy, but it is a very unique one. If you like unique royalty systems and if you like mm, kind of spunky female leads, you'll like this book. Um, again, the romance we could have done without. It wasn't really necessary. Honestly, I think she, that our lead character could have done everything on her own without man's help and she would have been just fine. But what do I know? Uh, yeah, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the whole romance kind of defeats the point of what the book is selling you. Like it's selling you this queen's only, you know, royal line implying that women are the superior rulers and therefore they don't need men. Like in this book, they have to have a, an heir to the throne. And so the men that are chosen, like once they do what they got to do to make the heir, they're gone. Like they're never, they're not part of their lives anymore. And so I guess the fact that there was a romance at all was just kind of like, but why? I mean, this could have been like a full on, female moment I guess and instead of a romance just have like a strong female friendship you know like an honest one or if you got to make it a romance you know well I'm not going to spoil anything but people are represented here so um the main romance didn't need it but read the book it's pretty good 
The next book I've read was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. And this was a, this is a romance, a straight up romance. And everybody loves romance. The premise of the book is that our main characters, Olive and Ethan, are the siblings of the couple, a couple that gets married at the beginning of the book. And at the wedding, everyone except Olive and Ethan gets sick. And so the bride, Olive's sister, is like, you need to take this honeymoon. You and Ethan need to go on this honeymoon because we can't go and we don't want it to go to waste. And they're twins, so like she can pass off as her. The problem is, is that Olive and Ethan hate each other. They have always hated each other and they probably always will hate each other. Or will they? So, the beginning of the book is very generic um, romance, you know, oh, I hate you, I hate you, you thought this about me, but you were wrong, it's just, you know, it's kind of, mm, seen it, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, but then, at some point, the novel kind of takes a turn, and it starts to deal with some extremely real problems that romantic couples can deal with and I don't want to spoil anything is it a spoiler I don't know I'm gonna pretend it's a spoiler uh, it's not really gonna take away from the novel but so at some point someone becomes unfaithful hint it's not our two main characters and so there's a lot of fallout dealing with that and I really appreciated the fact that Christina Lauren didn't shy away from it. She, it was very real how these characters all dealt with this infidelity and, you know, blood's thicker than water, they say. And this book just really did a good job um, talking about uncomfortable topics amongst romantic partners. And I really liked it. So initially, I was going to give this book a three, maybe a 3.5, because like I said, it was very generic. Um, nothing really exciting but then once once it kind of picked up and it got a little more real and a little more raw I really liked it because it, it just kind of went outside the realm of typical romantic comedy in that everything's silly and goofy and blah 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 like no this one was real like this one was heartfelt and so I ended up giving it five stars so if you like real romance definitely check out the unhoneymooners okay the next book I read is called The Dark Game by Jonathan Jans. Now, this is my first book by him, and he was recommended to me by the Books in the Freezer podcast, which is really good. So if you've not heard of it and you like horror books, go check it out. It's really great. And I'll put their channel information down below. So you check them out. If you love horror, you'll love these girls. I promise. So The Dark Game by Jonathan Jans. It's 10 writers are given an opportunity to go on a summer-long writer's retreat under the tutelage of a world-renowned famous writer, Roderick Wells. Now, immediately this book gave me Kill Creek vibes, just in the uh, Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, in the whole concept of writers being on a retreat and things happening. Um, I would say Kill Creek plus Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk equals The Dark Game by Jonathan Jans. And I could not finish Haunted. That book, whoo, that book was something else. I probably should give it another shot, honestly, because I, mm, anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> so in this uh, book, these writers, they go on a retreat and the the big prize at the end is essentially whoever's left standing gets a multi-million dollar book deal. Their name's going to be in lights. They're going to be famous. They'll never have to worry again. And so there's kind of a cutthroat atmosphere amongst these writers already. But then strange things start happening. And their host, Roger Wells, kind of is a little crazy. And it just there's trouble afoot and things start to go wrong. Now, what I liked about this book is I like books that make me uncomfortable. I like horror books that make me have to close the book and just be in my happy place for a little while. Um, 
<laughs> this this part of the reason why it's like haunted to me is because each writer has their own really messed up backstory and you know it kind of influences who they are today and some of these backstories are just really upsetting and some of them are a little sad and obviously you know the characters with the more messed up backstories you don't really like them they're kind of terrible people but the the sadder their backstory gets the more you like them there was one in particular if you read this book, you'll you'll know which one I'm talking about. But it's basically a kid that stumbles upon a man in a hole, and that's all I'm gonna say. But that story really got to me. It was very, it was actually really emotional, and that's not something you expect out of a horror novel. But maybe you should expect that. Out of, maybe that's what makes the horror novels good. Um, definitely recommend this book. I ended up, I ended up giving it four stars. I would say the reason I kind of took off a star was because it did feel a little formulaic and it felt, I don't know, it almost felt like I was watching a horror movie instead of reading a horror book, which I don't know if you should expect a difference in feeling, but I always do. Usually horror books are of a much broader uh, spectrum than the movies, but it was still really good. I really would recommend this if you like, you know, high stakes thrillers or horror novels at all definitely read this I personally am very much looking forward to reading a lot more Jonathan Jans um I'm instantly hooked so definitely check this book out definitely the second to last book I read was Monstrous Affections by David Nichol and this was a collection of short horror stories now I use the quotation marks because <sighs> Though some of them did read as horror stories, magical realism is not horror. Just because we don't, just because everything's a metaphor or it's not strictly, you know, played out, it doesn't give it this element of terror. It's just magical realism. And personally, that's my least favorite genre. Don't at me. I just don't like it. It may be, it, it's too highbrow for me, I suppose, but I'm just not a fan. Call something what it is or describe it in a flowery term, but don't, if you've read this book, you'll know what I'm talking about, but don't turn someone into a tree at the end of a novel as a metaphor for freedom or what have you. Don't even get me started. The point is, this book had too much magical realism in it for me. Like I said, there were a handful of stories that were super good, but for the most part, I was just not impressed, which is really disappointing because I feel like short horror is such a delicate genre and it's such a difficult genre to kind of master. Um, you know, Stephen King is popular for a reason. His short stories are great. Like, I mean, you know exactly what you're getting into. The terror factor is there. And it's a story. It's not a, it's not a thought, you know, it's just a, it's a full on story. Um, I was really disappointed in this one because I read or I watched David Nichol read one of the short stories from this collection and I was absolutely blown away. Um, I believe it was called the mayor will make a brief statement and then take questions or the, at this time or something like that. If you look it up on YouTube. It is so good. And he, the way he reads it, it's perfection. Um, it's probably one of the creepiest super short stories I've read in a long time. Outside of that one though, like, I mean, there were a few here and there, but the collection as a whole was not what I was expecting. And that's always disappointing. I'm really looking forward to finding a short story collection, a short horror story collection that actually lives up to my expectations. Because I don't think my expectations are that high. I just want to be super creeped out by what I read. So if you have any short horror story collections recommended that you can recommend to me that will actually terrify me, please comment them down below because I would love to read them. The last book I read was Sleepover by H.G. Bells. Not to be confused with H.G. Wells. This is obviously a pen name. I'm not sure why they chose one that was so close to a real name, but that's neither here nor there. 
If you have read World War Z by Max Brooks, then you are aware of the concept of oral histories. And what Sleep Over is, it is an oral history of an insomnia epidemic that strikes the world. So basically, one night, no one can sleep. The next morning, everybody thinks, oh, that was weird. I couldn't sleep. Turns out they can't sleep for days, weeks, maybe. Um, and it's just a collection of people's stories all across the world and in different, you know, walks of life and all that. And it was good. It was fun. It was entertaining, which is first and foremost, what books are meant to do is to entertain. It was entertaining, but there were a lot of confusing bits. Um, so the, the idea is that the author is collecting all of these stories from interviews but some of the people they interview die at the end of their story. So I'm not really sure how they told their story. That was a little confusing. But if you're capable of letting that go. if Sorry, my chunky cat just walked in front of the mic. So we had to make sure she moved. Oh, and there she goes moving the camera. She's a good camera assistant. And now she's sleeping. So if you can kind of look past obvious um, inconsistencies, like if you really just want a book to be entertained by, this is a good choice. I ended up giving it three stars. It was fine. You know, I was a little, like I said, I was a little bugged by the probability that dead people can't be interviewed. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? But yeah, it was entertaining. Read it. If you liked World War Z, don't expect the same level of quality. But it's a, it's a similar thing. <sighs> Spoiler alert, but you know, what are you going to do? I didn't like that there was like zero attempt at trying to figure out why people were falling asleep. Um, it just kind of started and then stopped. There's really nothing, no big like, government's working on this and turns out it was a bug from Mars that caused everybody to fall asleep and then all of a sudden they woke up it was I don't know I could have done with a little bit more like creativity on the why this happened all right so that is what I read in the month of June overall I had a pretty good reading month um a little higher than normal well I don't know I would say five to seven is about my average um Tell me if you've read any of these books. Tell me if you liked them. Tell me if you hated them. Tell me what you would recommend based on my likes and dislikes. Um, thanks for joining me, and I'll check you guys in the next one. Bye!